Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a new episode of the Metal Meltdown. And today we're looking at the latest studio album from Karach and Gren, entitled Frankensteiner Stratemontanus. Even by the standards and expectations of symphonic metal, let alone those of the symphonic black metal subgenre, Karach and Gren is a particularly eccentric, bombastic, and over-the-top band. They relish in a gothic theatricality and melodrama not too dissimilar from that of old-school Cradle of Filth. But whereas Cradle of Filth pulls from a pretty wide range of influences within the worlds of mythology, poetry, gothic literature, and the works of H.P. Lovecraft, Karach and Gren tend to focus more specifically on European folklore, ghost stories, and classic fantasy. In the past, even going as far as to create entire albums adapting classic stories such as The Flying Dutchman and Hansel and Gretel. And Frankenstein Estrada Montanus, the band's sixth studio album, isn't too much different. With the band choosing to craft and present a story based on the work of 17th century alchemist and occultist Johann Conrad Dippel, a man who later on would allegedly serve as the inspiration for Mary Shelley's 1818 novel, the modern Prometheus, more commonly known as Frankenstein. On top of that, Karachi and Gren's sonic formula is weirder than ever before. Pulling from their symphonic black metal peers like Dimmu Borger and the aforementioned Cradle of Filth, pulling flashes of influences from late 90s and early 2000s industrial metal, namely Rammstein and Marilyn Manson, pulling from the horror movie spook house antics of a gentleman like King Diamond. Like from a distance, this thing kind of looks like a black metal band designed by Tim Burton, which I don't think is out of line to say, because there were multiple moments across this record where I felt Karachi and Gren was also blatantly pulling and taking influence from the 90s goth aura that consistently permeates out of his films. Namely, Edward Scissorhands, Sleepy Hollow, dare I say, even The Nightmare Before Christmas. And all of this working together makes this album so immediately silly. So corny, so cheesy, eventually outright awkward as it continuously demands to be taken as seriously as possible. I'll give credit to the band for refining their storytelling abilities in a lot of key parts, and I'll give them credit for choosing to pull from real history rather than from fantasy history, making this feel immediately all the more gruesome. But unfortunately, a good concept cannot save an overblown, mediocre at best album, which is ultimately what Frankenstein Estrada Montanus is at the very core. There's just way too much happening on this album. This has to be one of the most overproduced black metal albums I've heard in a while. So many keyboards, choirs, string sections, barrages of blackened death metal, guitar work and drum work, snarling vocals, epic ritualistic vocals, operatic vocals. A voiceover in the album's opening that literally plays out as if somebody is telling you a scary story before bedtime. Weird chimes and sound effects and samples often popping in and out of the forefront of the sound. And I'd hoped that with time, once I had begun to dissect the album, it would grow on me a lot more. But that just wasn't the case. If anything, I found myself more and more irritated with every listen. I mean, initially I was rolling my eyes and giggling and scoffing, but by the time I got to my third and final playthrough of this record, I was just like completely disenchanted by this. Like it got to the point where I was skipping over entire sections that I found particularly unappealing and ridiculous. And weirdly, despite the album being as inherently overproduced as it is, the actual black metal part of this symphonic black metal feels really flat and lifeless and one-dimensional. The drumming in particular was just really weak for me on this record. Like, imagine the most generic, extreme metal percussion performance, but done entirely on mega-sized boxes of Rice Krispies. There were some tracks that, despite this album's awful production and presentation, I did find myself genuinely enjoying. Sun for Solitude, for instance, is really cool. I like the emphasis on string instruments here, kind of sounding like a blackened Nea Bliviscaris. 
or for instance the spicy dynamic black and death metal of Der Vampire von Nuremberg. But even some of these objectively more enjoyable tracks can still be pretty problematic. Take for instance the album's title track, Frankenstein Estrada Montanus. There's fun to be had with this number, with its morbid angel-esque groovy death metal barrages and its simple yet provocative chorus in which the band screams out, I am God! But as more and more flamboyant, symphonic, and industrial flavors begin to seep into the mix, I can't help but quickly be reminded of Morbid Angel's infamous Illidivinum Insanus. A thought that, despite my best efforts, ultimately soured this track on repeat listens. And then there's the album's official opening number, Scourged Ghoul Undead, which tries its damnedest to start this off on a particularly bloodthirsty note, but unfortunately is very quickly derailed by Karachi and Gren's tendency to cram the forefront with as much stuff as possible. Like, there are so many little sound effects and string flourishes across this number that eventually, after a while, I was saying, What the fuck is that? Not out of any mystery or, or suspense, but literally because I didn't know what the fuck that was. Karachi and Gren has always, to some extent, been a very style-over-substance band, to the point where I've come to see them as Black Metal's answer to Dragon Force. But the thing is, eventually Dragon Force realized that all they really had going for them was their style, and as a result did probably the smartest thing that any band in their position could have done. They embraced the sheer insanity of their hyper-explosive shred metal sound and stopped pretending to be a more serious band. Meanwhile, Karach and Gren still insist on being taken as seriously as possible, and in their quest to be taken as seriously as possible, they have turned Frankenstein, Estrada Montanus, an album with genuine potential, thanks to its pretty clever and powerful story, into the most pretentious and overwhelming album of their career. Initially, I was going to go with maybe a semi-enthusiastic 2 out of 5, but honestly, sitting here talking about this album more and more, thinking about how bored and annoyed I was on my third and final listen, I'm going to go with a 1.5 out of 5. This is, this is, a, this is a bad record. There are good things about it, sure, but those good things are buried under so much shit. Quite literally, in the case of this album's awful production and arrangement. I'm sure that the Karach and Gren loyalists will find a lot to enjoy and appreciate in this, and honestly, more power to you, man. I mean that sincerely. But this is the point where I might have to step off the Karach and Gren train, because I am not enjoying the direction that this band is taking in their quest to be the biggest symphonic black metal band of this era. I think in the future, Crotch and Gren need to scale down and trim down big time. Less big choirs, less string sections, less operatic, theatrical, melodramatic bullshit. Just make a really tasty, fun, melodic black metal record and see what happens after that. Because at this rate, if y'all keep going the route that you're going, you're going to end up making the Chinese democracy of symphonic black metal. Just something totally unlistenable, totally unredeemable, and so totally full of itself. 1.5 out of 5, this is a bad record. Please heed my words, Karach and Gren. Otherwise, the next one's going to be worse. And that is it for the Metal Melt. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me? NEXT! And thank you for watching, make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fucking-immediately! And you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.